Hello. Great to see you here. Today we're gonna use the pen tool to draw this little monster. But before we jump in, let's get to know some pen tool basics first. Click and click, that's a straight line. Double click the last point or press escape to stop drawing. Click and drag, and you've got a curve. Click on the same point to turn it into smart mode. Hold down control to grab the last point and keep going. And to close your curve, just click back on the starting point. Those are the main ones you'll use most of the time. You can use the pen tool together with the node tool, or hold down control to adjust curves. Just like the pencil tool. The pen tool uses stroke pressure to adjust the width of your curve. You can add and move pressure points to make the line thinner or bring it back to full width. Even save profile your settings to use later. Once you set a pressure, the pen tool will keep using it until you change or reset it. Okay, let's start drawing. The context toolbar at the top changes depending on the tool you're using. You'll see pen options like modes, convert node types, and actions like close curve. If you're curious about more pen tool tricks, go check out some other videos on it too. Take your time and keep drawing. I sped up the video a bit and cut out some parts. Draw vector lines are slow at first, but get faster with practice. I'm using a Wacom tablet to draw, so I don't usually work with the pen tool that much, mostly just for straight lines. Try exploring the pen tool options. This one really takes practice to get used to, but remember, even if you don't have a drawing tablet, you can still draw. Why use the pen tool anyway? Well, it gives you smooth, precise control, perfect for both straight and curved lines. It's also great for logos, font design, so try playing around with it and see what you can make. Okay, ink lines complete. Now let's add some pressure to our little monster to make the line softer and more alive, even thickness looks a bit stiff. Go to the stroke panel. We already saved some profiles earlier. Select the curve you want, then click the pressure profile you created. Normally, when we draw, the line pressure follows our natural hand movement and habit. But when you manually apply pressure to ink lines like this, you'll need to use a bit of imagination. As long as it looks good to you, that's what matters. Alright, now we've got our ink lines done. Next up, coloring. Just like in coloring part 3. And if you want to keep everything vector, you can use the fill holds method, super easy and convenient. Go back and check out how it's done. Alright, after adding all the details, let's move on to shadows and highlights. Select the object shape you want, click insert inside the selection. I'm going to use the pencil tool just to demonstrate how to do shadows and highlights. Press Ctrl plus G to group it. Rename it Shadow. Set the Blend Mode to Multiply. Then, use the Pencil tool to draw shadows inside that group. For highlights, do the same but change the Blend Mode to Overlay. OK. And that's it. Take your time and follow along. Vector art is really just like regular drawing. Once you do it, the result feels the same. Sometimes, when I just want to doodle, I use Pixel Studio, which works kind of like Photoshop. I haven't talked much about drawing or coloring in Pixel Studio yet, but if you already use other art programs, just a bit of adjustment and you can easily adapt. The workflow is very similar. Okay, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.